six months. That's right, it's been exactly half of a whole year since Ship 24 and Booster 7 were launched, which is also when the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Services started its review process on Starship's environmental impact statement, investigating the Starbase launch site and the surrounding area. This is truly a terribly long delay when compared to the actual amount of damage that SpaceX's Starbase along with the surrounding wetlands of Boca Chica suffered. However, better late than never. One could also call this a good sign that the next Starship launch is coming soon. But when will the FWS complete its survey? Let's find out in today's episode of Great SpaceX. On Thursday, SpaceX started cleaning up the concrete debris from the inaugural Starship launch. Personnel from the Fish and Wildlife Service and Texas Parks have been spotted on site, likely overseeing the process. For those wondering why SpaceX didn't do this sooner, they actually needed permission to do so. As announced before, an inspection and subsequent approval could be given within a 30 to 135 day time frame, depending on the complexity of the task. The investigation will include an evaluation of the impact on endangered species according to the FWS. The cleanup process begins with the removal of debris and hazardous materials. SpaceX, in compliance with the US FWS recommendations, takes measures to restore the affected area, which may include replanting native vegetation and rehabilitating affected ecosystems. SpaceX must work closely with the USFWS to ensure that all regulatory requirements and environmental standards are met. This collaboration ensures that the cleanup process aligns with legal and environmental guidelines. After the cleanup is complete, regular monitoring and assessments continue to ensure that the affected area fully recovers. This involves ongoing cooperation between SpaceX and the FWS to track the ecosystem's recovery and health. Additionally, this process includes analyzing air and water quality, potential soil contamination, and the impact on local wildlife. Ahead of the hearing before the U.S. Senate Subcommittee on Space and Science, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service shared that its regulatory approval process for the second Starship test flight could potentially last until the spring of 2024. In a statement on Tuesday, an FWS spokesperson said their agency received a final biological assessment from the FAA on October 5th and the FWS has up to 30 days to review it. This came after the FAA sent the FWS a letter in August which requested reinitiation of Endangered Species Act consultation. Under Section 7 of the Endangered Species Act, reinitiation of formal consultation is required when a project and its impacts change significantly, the amount of take issued previously is exceeded, we have new information on listed species not previously considered, or a new species is listed, the spokesperson said. Reinitiation involving major changes in effects analysis or changes in the FWS's biological opinion are addressed fully in a new consultation. For SpaceX's reinitiation with the FAA, we are considering the operation of a water deluge system. That new deluge system was part of a list of 63 corrective actions created as part of the SpaceX-led mishap investigation following the failed launch of the first integrated flight test on April 20th of 2023. The system has been used a few times, including on a pair of static fire tests of Booster 9, which is set to be the next to fly for SpaceX along with with Ship 25. On Tuesday, the company unstacked the rocket after stacking it just a day before. Following Monday's stacking operation, SpaceX said in a post on the social media site X, Starship fully stacked while the team prepares for a launch rehearsal. We continue to work with the FAA on a launch license. However, that license may still be a ways off. Following the 30-day review of the final biological assessment from the FAA, the FWS has 135 days to issue an amended biological opinion. That 135 days comprises the formal consultation period, which could last up to 90 days, and the process of crafting its biological opinion for which it can last up to 45 days. A spokesperson for the FAA said the agency will announce whether any environmental mitigations are required for the water deluge system when the environmental review is complete. The adjusted timeline comes as Bill Gerstemeyer, SpaceX's Vice President of Build and Flight Reliability, prepares to testify before the Senate Subcommittee on Space and Science on Wednesday in a panel focusing U.S. commercial human space activities. Testimony from Gerstemeyer and representatives from Blue Origin, Virgin Galactic, National Aerospace Solution, 
Solutions and CS Consulting will run the gamut from suborbital flights to lunar surface habitats. The last one is key for SpaceX and the Starship program. The rocket was chosen as the Human Landing System, HLS for short, for the Artemis 3 and Artemis 4 missions for NASA. Several demonstration flights of Starship will be required before NASA will authorize its astronauts to fly aboard the Starship. Those include a ship-to-ship -ship refueling demonstration as well as an uncrewed lunar landing. In an interview this week, a senior SpaceX official said that a backlog of FAA work caused them to make some tough calls on what they want the agency to prioritize regarding their launch vehicles. Licensing at this point for Starship is a critical path item for the Artemis program and for our execution, a SpaceX official said. Certainly looking forward into the next year, we really need to operate that program at a higher cadence of flights. Six to eight month turns, that's not great for the program. These delays may seem small in the big scheme of things, but a continuous delay of each and every test flight just adds up and eventually we'll lose our lead and we'll see China land on the moon before we do, Kirsten Mayer said. When asked by Senator Ted Cruz, Texas Republican, about the timeline for the HLS version of Starship, Kirsten Mayer said it was hard to pin that down. The burden should be put on us as a private company, put on SpaceX. Let us develop at the fastest pace. We should be the ones that are driving the development, not being driven by regulatory oversight. He added that SpaceX has had a hard time allocating resources amid uncertainty about when the launch license will arrive. We had people work extra shifts. We got the vehicle ready, then we couldn't fly. Kirsten Mayer said, adding that SpaceX will likely carry out more ground tests, such as a wet dress rehearsal, as it awaits the license, but that the regulatory uncertainty prevents them from establishing a more productive schedule. At the rate that the regulatory approval is moving, the turnaround could theoretically become a year or more. Delays in getting Starship ready in recent months caused NASA officials to say multiple times that they are keeping an eye on SpaceX's progress. Jim Free, the agency's associate administrator of the Exploration Systems Development Mission Directorate, said in early August that there is still time for SpaceX to meet NASA's Artemis 3 guidelines, but if not, he said, the agency is prepared to fly a non-landing mission for Artemis 3 and to delay the lunar touchdown to at least Artemis 4. We don't know when Starship will fly again. Musk had said in early May that the system would be ready for a new flight in six to eight weeks. And so the summer has passed and his company also did dramatic engine fires of Starship to prepare for the next flight. However, the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration cautioned in late September that the required regulatory processes for addressing issues on the first flight is not yet complete. While SpaceX said it has implemented all 57 actions required for the next flight and completed its investigation, the FAA has not yet awarded a license for the second launch. SpaceX also needs to receive environmental approval from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, according to Reuters. Once these key items are taken care of, however, SpaceX will likely launch quickly. Musk has also said that Starship is ready to go from a technical standpoint. Well, folks, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, and if you want to support our channel and get access to exclusive content, please consider becoming a patron by clicking the link in the description below. We appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.